Welcome to my year in review video for 2023 and let me tell you what a year this has been. This has been the biggest year for my Secret Monsters yet, so we have a lot to get through and I have no doubt this is going to be the biggest year in review I have ever done. So let's get straight into it then. So first of all, in January, we start off the year big with Bowhead on Amber Island. This was our very first new Quint that we saw on Amber Island. Obviously, the Quints, we'd not seen them in Dawn of Fire. We expected with Pong Ping that maybe we'd see all of the Quints eventually make their way to Dawn of Fire and Amber Island at the same time. We were speculating, too, that it'd be a great thing for this to happen, but that didn't actually happen. And we got Bowhead instead and the Quints on Amber Island, first of all. So with Bowhead, they played inside of the beginning section. I felt like it was a very minor part. You guys know I, I'm not really a fan of Amber Island. I felt like the Quints could have done a lot more and at this point I was questioning where the song exactly was going to go. I am exceptionally excited to see Bowhead in Dawn of Fire. That's where I'm waiting for all of the Quints to be honest as I feel like they're going to be given a ton of justice over there just like they have as well as we saw later in the year so I'm very hopeful towards that. And then following on from that on the very same day which we are going to see a lot of <laughs> as we keep going through here. We have Rare Flamox as well on Amber Island too here and now, this was the very first of many designs, which were very peculiar, honestly. This had a very darkened look, didn't it? Cobwebs, spiders almost, very cave-like, which is where it went later in the year, where we saw all of these rare fire elementals finally befit the actual islands that they were clearly made for. So it was quite awesome, this design, and very dark-themed. The rare fires certainly did take very unique appearances throughout the year, and it was really nice to see this class take that stride forward. Then on January 14th, we saw the plant island. Island Colossal Awaken. The thing that we'd been waiting for for an entire month. Back in 2022, they really teased this thing to death inside of the game that people had been waiting for it for years, and then they made us wait another month. It was it was so crazy. Anyway, this Plant Island Colossal, it was the one which had two sounds. Our very only one, actually, that had two sounds. All of the rest of them only had one sound, usually at the beginning of the song. I feel like the Colossals certainly add their bit towards the song. They are for that tension building, aren't they? This Plant Island Colossal design going later in this year, I felt like this was a very basic one, but it was awesome to see them opening up towards the Colossals awaiting on the islands. And obviously as well, it was a very momentous occasion. Just having this out all inside of the game is amazing and it cannot be understood how much of a revolutionary thing this is in terms of the law and potential future consequences that this is going to have as well. Then on January 18th, not so long after that, we got Carolong on the Magical Sanctum. Carolong, our wonderful friend over here, they had one track, and on Magical Sanctum, I felt like they did what they could on this island. It was awesome to see Carolong open up Magical Sanctum once more, an island which we'd not seen anything for for a little bit, not as long as some of the ones which are coming up, but really awesome. I quite like their addition here, and I felt like they couldn't have honestly done much more. Then and on January 18th, we also got Rare Zister. This one, a cactus. My boy, what did you do to your horns? That's what I want to know. This was a huge conflict towards the original design, and I love it when Rares or Epics change up the design so immensely like this. Not as much as Epic Glowl or completely looking like a different monster here, but really cool nevertheless. Then on January 18th, we also got the Crescendo Moon skin. This beautiful specimen, they really changed up and gently with this one. Glowing lights, really befitting the New Year's celebration as well and also getting that leap here resemblance in there too we can see huge painting on top of Enchantler the Titan design on this was absolutely astounding I feel like this Titan was the one that really changed the most probably alongside Light Island Phosphor when we do get onto that but really awesome this design I feel like this would really stood out inside of the year just like all of the rest of them really did and these Orc Seasonals ones just went above and beyond the original car ones it's been absolutely splendid then on January 18th we also got the Crystillium Castle on Ethereal Island and Sanctum. These ones, we definitely needed it on Ethereal Island. We were getting those epics and it certainly does help having those extra beds. But on Sanctum, I'm waiting for the moment where I can go, I need this castle on Sanctum. But it was awesome to get Crystillium finally make its return inside of the main game as well. We've been waiting for these castles, obviously, with us knowing these unused crystals inside of Dawn of Fire. Just getting to see them more in the original game, whether it be through Monculus, who uses Crystillium. It's been really awesome awesome getting more of that, especially with these castles as we've been getting them too. And then the week after that on January 24th, we got Prismatic Wraith. 
this. These ones just took the guitar Daredevil boy to another level. You got axes as guitars on these things. Does anything more need to be said? I really don't think so, honestly. These ones really awesome. And Punk Rocker, perfect for a prismatic riff boy. And then we move on to February, which is really jam-packed to say it's February, guys. There's usually like three things on here. Anyway, on February 1st, we got nine new Season of Love costumes. And we also got, very surprisingly, a skin update to Air Island. No one was really seeing this coming, but they were making all of the skins throughout the year purchasable through in-app purchases so people could buy them and put them on wherever they want, obviously. And this was a way for them to go back to them original skins, which we were just talking about, which just did not shine compared to them new ones and adjust them and make them better. This turned out so much more impactful, this season of Love One, as you can see on screen right now. And this just set a trend throughout the year of updating these skins and going above and beyond with the amount of content here. The costumes that we got were really awesome as well. I particularly like the Pom Pom Alice in Wonderland reference and also the Dandy Doo Dr. Zeus one because, I mean, come on. Rare Dandy Doo is Dr. Zeus reference as already and spicing that up a little bit with that costume was really cool. Quarister was also a really unexpected one here. We usually don't go outside of the islands all too much what the seasonal events are celebrated on so it's always nice getting that little surprise too. Then on February 1st, we also got Rare Yostridge, which I have to throw at you <laughs> because it was really disgusting this design. Rare Yostridge, I have made it a meme where it just goes with schlep because it really is so ugly to me. It's obviously based on a scarecrow you can see from this design. Really weird though. It reminds me of the Wizard of Oz scarecrow. This was the only rare mythical we got this year and it definitely made its mark on us. Let's say that much. Then on February 8th, we got Dromedary on Amber Island. Amber Island getting updated again. Dromedary really spiced up that Wallaby verse and made it whole before it certainly was not anything whole. It sounded very bare even with Wallaby being there, but Dromedary definitely made that verse complete and luckily it did too. That was actually our final addition to that as well. It also added a little minor sound to the beat pop, which is where Flamox plays. Really nice, that little fudge. I don't know why I like that more than the actual verse sound. <laughs> I should not say that, but that's an opinion right there. Then on February 8th, we also got Rare Krillby. This one shall forever be remembered as the foot stompers as I made that mistake when I was reading the bio that they apparently have foot stompers. So there you go. On February 15th, we then got yeah, on Earth Island and Mythical Island. Yes, finally something really impactful throughout the year. Massing Monsters was trending so much at this point and this monster I feel like made the game just explode in the most amazing way. Earth Island has never been the same. This guy added a whole new verse onto Earth Island. Island, and it has never been the same since. Earth Island, like I was saying inside of my theories at the time, you could see that it had that potential to have an extra verse. It had enough sounds to it, and I'm so glad they went ahead and did it. And what a perfect monster to add to Earth Island. Hula is a perfect prankster. You guys love it. I love it. But I feel like those prankster vibes really fit my singing monsters, and combining that with such a wacky, humorous sound and an organ, which we were all craving for as well at the time, and was speculating could happen and then it actually happened was just phenomenal and then on mythical island it went in my favorite verse it added so much towards that beginning and i just love this guy this guy is so perfect one of the most perfect monsters of the year I might even go this far to say it is the best original monster of the year in terms of the community side of things so there you go i can remember making that community post best monster ever i take no take backs on that obviously it's not one of my faves but just in the game in general. This is one of the best original characters you can have. Then on February 15th, we also got Weasel. Such a peculiar monster this one. And what a duo these were. Came out at the perfect time. My singing monster has really peaked at this point. And this, what a perfect monster to collide with. Yeah, with. This monster is so unusual the way it makes that gurgling bu -bu 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 noise. It is really strange. And the way it complements the song is so unusual. And I will never get over how that just sounds so good. I feel like as well, this monster is the one that really has grown on me. I will now go around the house making random weasel noises. <laughs> I love this guy so much. I feel like it can't be understated. Just how weird and peculiar, but also uh, what a good match this one was for Mythical. Then on February 15th, we also got Epic Combo. Quite the surprise turn of events. I didn't see this one coming and what a toxic boy this one is. I feel like it's a perfect design for Ethereal Island, but on 
Earth Island is quite unusual on there, ain't it? Just like us rare fires, honestly, you can see which island they were aiming for with this design. Then moving on to March now, the fun does not end, guys, as we got on March 8th. Oh, I love this one. This one was so good. March 8th, Fiddle on Fairy Island. This one, oh, this one had so much on Fairy. Yes, this one, I feel like out of all of the seasonals, this was the one that just, wow, I was fascinated by in terms of sound. I was shocked by this thing to the very core. I cannot believe how amazingly catchy that first part of Fairy Island was. To me, my ears have never really turned on and been like, whoa, this part of the song is amazing. Fairy Island, no, let's just skip to Hippity Optiverse. But this made the song feel like it was whole to the point where now I want to obviously listen to the whole thing, which is amazing because obviously you want that inside of a song. You don't want to be skipping to one point. So it's nice to have this nice general conclusion to the island. Fiddle as well is played on an actual instrument. And I feel like that adds so much to this monster as well. I think instruments actually actually be played in real life. It adds so much character, flair, that you just don't get from computer instruments. I really do hope that they do something like this again, because man, is this amazing. We definitely need more actual instruments in the game that are just played in real life, because this shows how amazing that can be. Then on March 8th, complimenting Fiddle, we also got Fairy Island Dipsters. These alongside the Bone Island ones are absolutely amazing. I cannot believe how catchy they are. I love them so much. I'm not a big fan of of dipsters. In fact, I go as far to say I don't like them, but these ones, I love them so much. When they come in with Fiddle, it is everything. It completes the song and they both went exactly where they needed to and did the perfect things to make this song so much better. And then on March 8th, we also got the Clover Spell skin. It had rainbows around it, clovers, really again, setting these orcs skins apart from the regular ones, making them awesome. We also got on this date, the Cold Island Conundra beginning. And then on March 8th, along with Fiddle, just keep in mind this is all on the same day, we got Tusky on Amber Island. Oh, this was my favourite quint. I love this one so dearly. Tusky, you will forever be in my heart. I love you so much. Now, this one, I was dreading it, but it went where I didn't want it to go. I was feeling like it was gonna go after Bowhead, and then it just kind of copied Bowhead in that section. I felt like it could have done so much more again, Amber Island. And that's what I felt like all the way along, honestly. But really awesome Quint and when we come to Dawn of Fire, oh, that is where we will love these Quins. Even when we get to see them where else, we saw them this year as well. So awesome. Then on March 8th, we also got Rare Ed and Mimi. This one quite goth style, dark themed. Yet again, in those Rare Fire dark themed styles, which really did make me wonder what was going on with these Rare Fires. I thought it was really cool, but also questioning why at the time. Then on March 15th, oh, Oh no, not <laughs> this one. I'm being dreading this moment. I don't like you. You can get lost now. March 15th, Prismatic Wallaby, the burnt furnace goo fuel that we all put in the furnace and pretend it's never there. That one, yes, the blue one. Oh my God, this tarnation. I was looking forward to these prismatics. But this one, this one didn't want me to look forward to it at all. This one wanted me to put it in that furnace, right? These ones, they were all based on slob. I mean, you got some cuteness there with eyes which are kind of drooping off but other than that I mean there's nothing really here to be beheld is there there's just slop that, that's the end of your <laughs> for prismatic will it be that's all there is then moving on because I don't want to talk about this thing March 29th we got rare hippity hop wonderful scene res have the spotlight like with rare tiara later in the year as well I really like it when they release them just by themselves because it gives them a bit of a light rather than the other monsters for example getting overshadowed here but Deputy Hop, really the thing of Easter. You can see the Easter Bunny style with this one. I'm a huge fan of Hippity Hop. I really like them. I love their sound on Fairy. And it was nice to see them get a rare as well because we saw quite a few rare magicals this year, which has been really nice. Basically every seasonal event. Well, most of them anyway. And then on March 29th, we got nine new extravaganza costumes. And we also got a skin update for Water Island. This skin, I absolutely love this Water Island skin. It was full of Easter. 
Easter eggs everywhere. You had the relics, old currency symbols, which used to be eggs before they changed it here. Wonderful Easter eggs and just everywhere all over this island. They were everywhere. The patterns on the eggs. I could not believe the amount of detail put into this thing. And to say this was an updated skin as well, it, it fascinated me so much. I love how much they changed that. That was the best probably update to me. Nah, it was the best updated seasonal skin to me because of the Easter eggs and how much of a diode fan I am over the law. And then we also got the nine new extravaganza costumes, namely here again, that rare thumpies one. Going back to Anyanka and is it Gorg? Just from memory here. Yeah, really awesome seeing these thumpies variants return and again, getting an oddball here with Enterbrat, which is an Omwar Island. Then we move on to April now. Going fast and going strong in April. Oh boy, we, this is where things start spiking up here. We've got a full timeline here. That's when you know things are going now. Right, so on April 5th, we got Trench in the Works. The brand new trailer for Anglo. Now, I brought this up because inside of this, we got the lore behind Jalel Jiggles and the different creatures that are revealed inside of Anglo's bio. Really awesome seeing this lore take place. And I cannot believe that they just brought along new creatures just for one monster in the lore and the Monstriana Trenches. I love this amount of lore. And that actually ties on to our next thing, which is Anglo on War Island and Mythical Island, of course. Created by one of the ultimate backers once again, like Nyehehe. And our final one to do so. This one, I am unfortunately not a very big fan of Anglo. I love its lore, though. Its lore is what makes this monster so complete. I love how they tied into Anananamons and Jalel Jiggles. Just these oddball creatures coming along into its lore and tying it back to Dawn of Fire as well and how this monster approached the monsters and how it's originated was just fascinating to learn about. Anglo on War Island, I feel like it takes away from the song. I am not gonna lie to you guys. I listened to it and it just, I can't deal with Anglo inside of the song. It's got a very mechanized look and War Island is all about going with the flow and and all of the alarms and stuff going on with its sound. It just doesn't really fit with that flow to me of War Island, which is quite unfortunate, but on Mythical Island, it, it makes that police siren noise, which I am again, not too much of a fan of, but in the final verse, it mimics the bass and amplifies it. And I really like that inside of the final verse. Just unfortunately, it didn't quite make the cut for me in terms of it sounds really, but in terms of design, it's also really nice as well. Really alienated, which is obviously what they were trying to do with this. And the fact as well that we got revealed here inside of its floor. I don't want to skip over this. They basically hinted that there's different planets in the monster world beyond the actual monster world planet itself. This has huge ramifications potentially for the future of the game and potentially seeing these other planets, which would be absolutely awesome. So can't be understated there how much of an impact that this could have. Then on April 5th, we also got Pink Hound, a dog boy. This one is so grumpy, man, ain't it? Look at that face. Oh, you know, it goes at the beginning of the song and it just boop, poings, and that's your, your Ping Hound for your ear. <laughs> Oh, bless it. It's flippers as well. What a cute boy. You're a good old dogger. And then on April 5th, this is the one that just took me by complete surprise. We got revealed towards rare wobblings. I can remember I opened up the loading screen. I'd not watched the trailer and I was bamboozled. Oh my goodness, I have just booted up the loading screen. <sighs> How do you go and add rare wobblings? And then you add all five at once. This was a day to remember. I'm so sorry, Anglo, but the rare wobblings, they surpassed it for me. Rare wobblings in the community, they've always been gossip. They've always been fun fan creations, but them actually coming to life. You couldn't have put it past me. I wouldn't have believed you for one second. But here we are and what a wonderful timeline this is. I feel like obviously they're really hard, but they go above and beyond in making making them worthwhile. These designs are the best rare species I have seen as of yet. Rare Poke is actually my favorite rare or epic inside of the game. That's how much I love these things. I think it's quite ironic as well because MSM Poke Gamer, it finally makes sense why that is in my name because this is an awesome one, that one. All of them though in these went above and beyond. I feel like Red Drumroll was kind of left behind here in terms of the awesomeness compared to the other ones, but man, it can't be understood 
devastated. These designs, they just look so epic, man. Then on April 5th, we got the Wobbling Island update as well on the same day, which featured the tiles and polarity. Now, we've got to mention here, this island, it's not been updated in years. And then we just see these rare wobblings, and then the tiles come on. It's everything. So in terms of tiles, some of the monsters used to be bigger in terms of the space that they take up, but they reduced the size because obviously rare wobblings were coming over. The polarity, when you put certain monsters next to each other, the polarity goes up and the actual resources you get increases in terms of time. Now, I think that the polarity, I think this is something that could still be improved. I think in terms of likes, I really like the unity tree because once you have the unity tree, you can basically decorate your island as you want to decorate it. And I feel like that is missed out on with polarity at the moment. So I'm not exactly sure what the answer is behind it, but I would like to see another update to that potentially if we can. It was so awesome though, getting that towel reduction as well. I mean, all these updates, they didn't have to do this, guys, but they set the benchmark for this year, honestly. Amazing stuff coming non-stop. Then on April 8th, we got the Cold Island Colossal Awakening. This one, Frigil, which his names were actually revealed later in the year. I forgot to put that on my timeline. What a disgrace. I'll bring them up as we keep going through them. But Frigil here, as we voted inside of September, I feel like this design really stood out. It's one of my favorite colossal sounds, actually. I love how they incorporated eventually. You didn't really hear it with Plan. Might have been a bit hard to mimic with Plan, but they integrated the elemental affinities of that colossal into the sound itself. And I feel like that was so awesome. They even went and changed the sound effects behind Awakening and putting the colossal to sleep itself. Changing that to associate with the affinities. They didn't do it for uh, Phylon's colossal, which I do hold a bit of the Gudger games, but the fact they did it for most of them, so awesome. Adding that atmosphere to them. Because these colossals, so weird. And something which I didn't really talk about with the Planet Island one as well is how these colossals have been asleep a long time. So this sound, sounding so weird and befitting the law was so awesome to see. Then on April 19th, this is the one where we were like quaking, what is going on right now? Because for then, it didn't just come to Amber Island like we're on about. It came to Sugarbush Island as well. I am still shocked by this. Sugarbush Island, the island which haven't been updated since 2014. Not 2013, song-wise. I mean, we've got as rare as an epic swing time, but let's put this into perspective here. Ten years, and then you just come out with this update. It's absolutely catastrophous. It is. My singing monsters. I can't believe it. It's a true monster, this, that this happened. Sugarbush Island, and let's just play real here as well. Absolutely love the vein on Sugarbush Island. The vein on Amber Island, it makes its ruggedy rug sound. <laughs> but on Sugarbush Island, that ooh, oh yeah, it's ingrained in the song. Now, I love it. It's catchy. The vein, we love you. Yeah. Then on April 19th, alongside the vein coming on Amber Island, this was not the only Amber Island update we got, guys. Because we got our final updates to Amber Island here, too. What a perfect way to end Amber Island, honestly. This was the way to do it, wasn't it? Which was adding Nalls onto Amber Island as well at the time. This one is the fan favorite Quins. And I do get why this thing has the best vocals ever. I was so shocked behind the vocals behind this and I am really excited to see it in Dawn of Fire. This also added the final verse to Amber Island as well now with Dromedary at the very end as well and made this song extend itself, which I'm sure plenty of people who enjoy the song were very interested by and absolutely love. Can't wait for it in Dawn of Fire. Give it me in Dawn of Fire, okay? Then on April 19th, we also got the Echoes of Eco Skin. This one featured the Grapefruit Grove tree in the background. And actually, all of the obstacles and the skin itself is a huge reference to Grapefruit Grove, which is another My Singing Monsters game in the My Singing Monsters universe featuring monkeys. There's no gameplay on this, really, besides the trailer itself, which they featured on My Singing Monsters Live. Hopefully, we could see some more from this game someday. I want to play it really bad. So, <laughs> hopefully, I do get to us someday. But I love the way that they've sparked Amber Island up here and again, the Easter eggs. The Easter eggs. These are making these skins at this point. On April 19th, besides our gnolls, all on the same day again. Spread it out, my love. <laughs> this is getting wild. Rare Pongping as well on Amber Island. This one was really awesome. Alongside Rare Tiawa, this took the cake for me this year in terms of Rare Fires. Really love this one. Dragon styled, ain't it? And that hair, oh, that is so cool. I also love that they took away the brackets that they have and replaced them with these mirror-like ornaments as well. 
well to see that dragonness. So cool. On April 19th, we also got two epic fires coming out weekly on Amber Island for four weeks. Completing our Amber Island epics that were available throughout the rest of the game on Amber Island itself, which was quite nice. Then on April 26th, I don't like to go, oh, I called it or whatever, but oh, I called it. <laughs> All right, so on April 26th, we also got me coming out with my ethereal quint predictions, quad and triples as well. Now we know this turned to be ethereal workshop, which I just wanted to slide that in here because I feel like this was a really zany one to predict. I've predicted more seasonals before. I've predicted lots of things, but I feel like this one was a definitely high accomplishment for theories. And honestly, I am very proud of this theory and they actually did happen because Workshop is amazing and I'm so happy that this turned out to be true. Hopefully more theories can turn out to be true as well because that would be awesome and it means that they are listening to the community as well. Now on May 3rd, going on to May now, we had Rare Claw the Vera, which, ooh, I love the cloves on this one. We don't really get cloves on monsters, I've mentioned this tons of times now, but cloves on monsters, so awesome to see, but something so rarely seen. This one, I love the heels on it, the cloves aspect and just how colorful it was as well. I love how they decided to bring back rare seasonals throughout an absolutely tremendous year inside of the out of season events. I feel like the epics are the main things behind the seasonals and the main point of interest behind the variants themselves. And I feel like the fact that we're going to experience that the next time the seasonal events come around is definitely going to make those events feel much more whole. So it definitely makes sense why they did that and I'm so grateful that they have. And of course our Air Island Conundrum began on that day as well. Then on May 3rd, we got Rare Wodger. Wodger, uh, Wodger, Wodger. Uh, Wodger is based on Extravaganza. With huge ears and a colourful look, this one fits perfectly with his Rare Wobblins, and I love them very much. I think I'm right there, so there you go. Then on May 17th, we got the Search for Squeed trailer. I found this trailer so weird. I didn't get what they were going for with this one, honestly. I felt a bit betrayed, if I'm being honest. <laughs> this Search for Squeed Squeed. The squeed decoration. That is a mystery that we all want to be solved. And then this perplexed blast trailer, it sets out to do it. But then it just gets in a cavern and it's just like, oh, this entrance, woo, and then spirits on fire oasis. It's just so strange to me. I feel like they could have took this a bit further, maybe, this squeed decoration, rather than it just being basically an entrance towards the caverns. It felt like it needed more, this decoration, so maybe it will one day. But I felt like it was just so strange. But let's have a look that for a minute because we have May 17th for Spirit on Fire Oasis. Interestingly, I don't really feel like the seasonal took the spotlight the first time really this year with Spirit. Maybe the only time I'd rate it as well out of the Ox seasonal event. Spirit, it didn't really get that spotlight. I feel like this one, it was just humorous. What I was looking for was just the laughs. Okay, Fire Oasis, when it came there, it's just funny. With Spirit, you aren't going to get that really. I didn't really understand that last year when I was discovering it because obviously you're just there for the sound, but this one it's just a pet the laughs. It's your Huzz Air boy. So that's what he's all about. And he definitely got that. And the Huzz bar just had me dying. That's a reference to the monster handlers because they always got bar when people bring up things that they can't really answer, like unreleased content and updates. So it's so awesome that they threw that in there because Spirit, people have misguided it as being monster handler. And it basically is in its own right anyway because of its law, which states apparently it was a monster handler that turned into a monster, which I don't want to get into that one. Oh, I do not like it. I don't like it one bit. But we're moving past that. The thing that overshadowed this thing. It was Rare Box on Fire Haven. I love this. It sounds quite strange on Fire Haven. I will give you that. It doesn't sound like it's original sound. And when I hear people like Raw Zebra coming in, making Rare Box sounds, they sound perfectly fine alike to the original. I do question why it was changed so much. Hopefully that isn't the case for the rest. But it certainly fits in the Fire Haven song. And and it's an awesome addition. So really do like that. I must say as well, there's lots of love that was given to Firehaven this year and just in general because it wasn't too far off the we had 
box in 2022 as well. Literally only in November the past year. And the amount of Fayhaven stuff has just been crazy. I feel like that can be said for every island though, man. Then on May 17th, we also got Epic Snizer. This one it is toxic. It is wonderful. We love it. It doesn't really have the geyser component to it, this one. They really went in another direction with it, which I feel like makes this epic really awesome. I love the changing eyes as well, and I feel like that might have been hinting towards a certain prismatic what might have arrived later in the year. Then on May 17th, we got the Perplex Blore skin. This skin was amazing. I can't believe how much Fire Oasis changed. They changed the tiling behind the island, and this was the first one, and first island really, ever to have a tiling amongst the floor, which just spread out throughout the full island, and rather than it being something mimicked all the way across on the actual island topping, it was instead a huge compass, a whole single image. It was just so crazy, and I cannot believe the structures around it as well, and the sky. This really set up a lore-based event perfectly on Fire Oasis. And on May 24th, we then got Prismatic Dromedary with the little critters behind them. This one that we have on screen right now, the purple one, that one is the creepy one. But the rest of them, they are actually quite cute, some of them. I find the critters behind them what really make this design whole. I love it when we get little monsters like this or other monsters or monsters themselves. It's just so awesome to see. I really, really love the direction that they went with these and another awesome prismatic to add to the book. Out of quite a mixed bag, to be honest. And then on May 21st, we got beginning the month of the mythical two, which might be a thought teller, hopefully, of more months inside of June, hopefully, being dedicated towards the community and choosing things for the game. That would be awesome. But this is our final potentially month of the mythical, I would say. Mythical Island now having ended. But Bazinga's polls began here. People voted for it to be an insectoid and what family it would be based in. From these inside of the spheres, we actually did conclude eventually that it would be inside of the Bung Prey family quite accurately as well, I will say, as that's exactly where it turned out to be. Part of the drone sex with Humbug. Then moving on to June now. On June third we got the air island colossal awakening this design was so cool i love zephyr a lot i love the goggles and the little ooze as well it's supposed to be missed inside of their eyes isn't it to represent air something that was honestly seen with the cold island one as well they started suiting the actual eyes themselves towards the elements which i found so cool the sound ended up going somewhere where the community in general from the comments i was finding were finding that it was quite full that verse already maybe could have ended up somewhere else inside of the song but i personally quite like this sound and i find it quite cool and also really cool that it didn't go at the beginning of the song maybe although maybe that would have been the best conclusion honestly for our island it's quite full that song then on june 7th oh this one monculus on ethereal and Wobbling. I got a bit crazy here and I just put hand in an F. <laughs> Wobbling, let's bring it up. Wobbling Island, the song again, which has not been updated since 2017 or 18. Look, look, this is crazy stuff. This is stuff that makes your mind boggled and this is perfect for anniversary year. I cannot believe that Monculus ended up here and just the right monster to do so. Wobbling Island plus Monculus. You can't get better than that, guys. It's absolutely amazing. I still am bamboozled by it. I love it so much over there. It feels like it was a perfect match. Even above Ethereal Island, I love Wubben Island Monculus. It is absolutely absurd. But on Ethereal Island, it does something absolutely amazing. Basically, from a playground, they had these Ethereal Island remixes where they played with the Ethereal Island song a little bit and they basically put that inside of the song itself with Monculus. I can only predict that Tom, who's the composer behind My Singing Monsters now, actually worked on those and kind of wanted to weave its way inside of the original game with what it worked on already and man it really paid off but on Wobbling that is where this monster goes this is it's too good to be true I love it then on June 7th we also got the life formula skin my favorite seasonal skin and my favorite seasonal event now I love life formula so much I have this skin on actually all the time if you go on in my game now I can't take it off I love the statues in the background I love the Easter eggs as well throwing back to them Dawn of Fire diamond mines and actually going oh hey those are actually some of the prototypes as well behind the island it was awesome to see our first bubble right statue of a single 
Battle Elemental with Ghast in the background as well. Maybe a little bit too big to be something maybe that was actually canon, but I love the direction that this game went in. It's my favorite one. I love it so much. I love you. I love your life formula skin. I'm never taking that off. Then on June 7th, we also got Epic with Man, what a day this was. This one as well, such a huge surprise. I don't think anyone was seeing those wings come. I can remember when I first saw them, I was so shocked because you don't expect the wings. You see this, you don't think of wings, but then they come out and you're just absolutely amazed. I cannot believe the things they have done this year. It's amazing. And then moving on, on June 7th, we also got at the exact same time, Rare Blipsqueak. This had eyes inside of it and my word, they took that mechanized look. Obviously it was month of mech this month and they took that and they made this amazing wobbling. All of the wobblings this year have been based on the individual months, which I absolutely love because it means we get a chance to theorize about it, obviously, but it also brings a sense of continuity to them, which you really don't get otherwise, which I'm so grateful for. Whenever they do things like this, I love it. I love it. My favorite brain loves it. On June 14th, the week after that, we got a little micro update here, which I do love my little micro updates. Can't have big ones. Let's spread it out sometimes, right? But on June 14th, we got Rare Tiawa and the Thorny Mine. The Thorny Mine, I had them all over my Plant Island on Steam for a year. And I am so rich now. I am very rich. Don't watch the end of my Festival of Yay video to see how many diamonds I had left. I am rich now, okay? And then on Rare Tiawa, with the M, I absolutely love this one. They absolutely delivered this one. Alongside Rare Pongping, these are my favorite Rare Fire designs. I think Rare Tiawa definitely won out of them both, though, for me. This is the best Rare Fire that I've seen so far, and rightfully so. I love to pity tap Tiawa so much, and the lightened look definitely served them well with that feather as well. Then on June 21st, we have single element ethereals on the Colossingum. Well, I've spelled that wrong but it's pretend it says Colossingham. And then we also had, of course, the costumes alongside that. We're just going to focus on the costumes because I don't think anyone really plays the Colossingham. I'm going to be real with you guys. I thought these costumes were quite cool. I was quite surprised that they added so many. I can remember thinking maybe they'd add three. I'm thinking that were two more inside of my theories, but two as well. That was already too much. Later in the year when we got even more ethereals, it got even more crazy, but I love these designs. The diamond costume ones definitely were very worth it. I like like the mechanized look behind those ones specifically and i do question why humbugs was the one to split apart from that little trend that they had but i love these a lot then on june 21st we also got the water island conundrum beginning and following on from that june 28th whiz bang on light island we got a giddy whiz bang here what i've put together one of my edits that i put together i've put it here because i love whiz bang little whiz bang oh you're so precious i did get really confused by its contribution to light island i feel like it could have done maybe a little bit more i'm not sure it had the fireworks instrument maybe it did all it could honestly but quite a minor addition there but we love your whiz bang and on 28th we also got life island dipsters i feel like these ones they were okay quite slow paced they were all right i feel like the fairy and bone ones they were quite hard to beat and when i'm looking here now it made me realize especially when we get to them psychic ones just how hard hard it is to do something meaningful with the dipsters. I think because they've already got those hard-coded notes down, it's hard to mimic them in a way where it feels satisfactory. I don't know how else to put it. I felt like they were getting redeemed, but when we got onto Psychic Island, that's where mm, I, I'm a bit iffy on those. In my reactions, I was all right. I was thinking, you know, we've got to be redeemed and all that, but looking back now, mm, I'm not too sure, guys. Anyway, the 28th, oh boy. Oh boy, this one was marvelous. This one, sky painting skin. Look at this colorful baby. I absolutely love this. Look at the colorful look they gave to Phosphorus Titan here. I like the different kaleidoscopes gathered around as well. Really nice reference there towards different colors and how you get those across the kaleidoscope reference throughout the island. I thought it was wonderful because obviously you look through those and you see all the different colors. I thought that's just such an awesome idea to bring to an island and so unique as well. Obviously we had the fire works in the background. I love how different this looks and just how much life it brings to a once dull and quite mellow island, which obviously really suits Light Island song, but to see it be lightened up for such a nice, eventful event like Pride, it's just so nice to see. Then on 28th, we got Rare 
Flores. Oh, good old Nash is here. This one. This terrified me to death. What on earth are you doing with teeth on your Flores? This one, it actually did quite as creep me out. This one. You know, I look at Rare Yostridge and I actually think I was creeped out more by this, to be honest. Nash's, it has teeth on it. It's so strange. I don't get what the little indentations are about as well above it. It's like these teeth have gone somewhere. Then on July 5th, we got Prismatic Flumox. The really unique idea with the hands behind these. Flumox quite meditational. And you think about the hands sometimes and how they can go like that almost, don't you, among you? And they decided to do that with the horns on this, which fits perfect because they go like in the same shape as what you put your arms out inside of meditation. Such an awesome idea. And put it on some of the faces as well and how fingers could intertwine it into it. I thought this was really unique. And again, a really interesting design choice for them to choose. Then on July 12th, inside of Summer Song now, July actually being one of our least updated months of the year, surprisingly, when it's actually one of the most updated usually, which is quite surprising this year, but given what we get into later, it was guaranteed, man, because, man, there's usually like three things per month, but we've got full timelines every single month for this one. That really can't be understated. But anyway, Rare Timper, I think that this one, it was so cool again. The Rare Wobbling, every single one, they delivered so well. And again with this one, they deliver. This one really reminded me of Wobbling Island with its hair. I remember with the Monster Explorers, they collaborated with me for that discovery video and we were seeing that together and how cool that was. They befit the actual colossal itself of Wobbling Island. We've not really seen anything like that besides Enchantlin, who mimics Enchantler Magical Sanctum's Titan. So it's nice to see that, honestly, and it's suiting its island really well. Yet to see how much the Rare Wobblins change, they do suit Wobbling Island and that does honestly bring about quite a bit of curiosity to me. I wonder how they do that. That is actually a really good point. On July 12th, we also got alongside Rare Timber nine new Summer Song costumes. And the one that we look at is Wobox, of course. This one finally has a costume. Wobox, all these years where we've not had a Wobox costume, throw them all away. We got his costume now. And what better than a Clubox costume? If you give a Wobox a costume, you give him a Clubox costume. I did we never think of this? We'd never see it coming, though, would we? All these years inside of the Summer Song trailers, they've had the dormant form of Club Ox, and finally with this costume, it gave us a chance to see maybe what it could look like if it was brought to life. And honestly, it's such an awesome costume and tribute towards the community. Ghost Tim obviously has animated all these years Club Oxes, and seeing it be brought to life, canonized in the game, really awesome. This little fan point that people have been asking for for a long time. Then on July 19th, we got Rare Carolong as Blue Guy. I don't really have much to say about this one, so let's continue. And then on July 22nd, the Water Island Colossal Awakened. This one, it went at the end of the song, and I feel like this is the one that fits inside of the song maybe the most to me. I feel like it isn't too bombaric, it isn't too out there, it is just right. And that is actually saying a lot because it plays in the final verse. I don't know how that works either, because Anglo, it does have that same kind of opposition to that, where it doesn't really fit the song, where it's so out there and loud, but it conflicts with it in a way which I find really satisfying and nice. I can't really describe it other than that, but maybe my favourite colossal sound. Yeah, definitely my favourite colossal sound out of them. And then moving on to August now. We had on August 2nd. What in the world? We have had rare wobblings. We have had seasonals going where they're not even supposed to. Mythicals galore. Quince. Quint elementals. Five elementals. But then on August 2nd, let's throw that away because, oh my god, the celestials as well. Let's put them in the bandwagon. So now we've got Wobbling Island being updated with chanting news. Sugarbush Island. What in the world is going on? And now Celestial Island is getting on dead. And the day before this, we accurately predicted what was going to come. We predicted that the Elder Forms of Starhenge would make their return in the main game because obviously rares don't really make sense in terms of the law because there's only supposed to be one Celestial of each. And that turned out to be true. But it turned out to be even better than that somehow because we got all new adult designs. I'm loving all of these designs so far. But particularly with this Celestial Ascension reveal, we got adult Scarator the same day. I really like this one. This went against the trend of it starting on the day the month begins. I'm so flabbergasted by this design. I think 
the, the celestial designs have been improved so immensely. Those baby designs, they've always been said to stray apart somewhat from the main game and those designs. They certainly do. I can see where people come from, but seeing them take on these massive forms and these sounds finally come to life, it feels like it's so awesome to see. And to see them come to life in a way which we couldn't have expected with adults as well, it's brought new territory to the game and something really special. They really do come to life, these, the song itself as well, and I can't wait to see them all. On August 2nd, besides a Celestial Ascension announcement as well, we got the Earth Island Conundra beginning alongside our Celestial Ascension. Now, this one, it had quite a big impact, the trailer towards this. The Monsandlers, they know the Earth Island. It is loved inside the community. So they put the Earth Island teaser at the very end, which I loved so much seeing a teaser for it and the making out to be huge because the Colossals are in terms of the lore and I certainly think they do deserve that. I feel like the Colossal sounds and the Colossals are waiting in didn't quite somehow. I'm not really sure how to explain this. Meet my expectations maybe in terms of what I would have expected before them come in. And I feel like that can be said for a lot of people in the community as well. I'm really hoping that one day we get a Colossal Island with the spirits. If you guys have watched my video, you know what's up, you know where it's at, you know we need it because that would redeem these creatures and make them awesome. Not to say that I've seen them awaken awesome though, because that is awesome too. Now on August 9th, we got Bookworm on Psychic Island. This one, it, oh, it had two tracks again. It made the song so complete whole. Love your Bookworm. Another percussion monster on Psychic Island I'll add as well. It feels like there's so much percussion inside of that song, whether it be all of the psychics with Popette and just bonkers, Yuggler. There's so much going on. And to say you had another one, and it made Thanks, it's so awesome. Bookworm, we love you. I mean, just can't believe how much we got this year. I'm just, I'm just still in shock. I'm going through this timeline and it feels like we've had a whole 10 years worth of updates thrown at us all at once. It's absolutely wild. Then on August 9th, we also got the Psychic Island Dipsters. These are the ones where I felt like it fell apart a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like these ones, they could have been better. I don't really like them all too much. I think they've just missed that mark of being okay. They're quite slow. I find them really monotonous how they play that one single note. I get that you can't really go out there. It's Psychic Island, right? It wouldn't have worked otherwise. And that's why I feel like it's so hard to work with Dipsters. And I think that's potentially too why we might not be seeing too much of these guys in the future. I think we might see them on one final stop, wherever that could be. Maybe coming soon. But <laughs> I don't think they're going to go anywhere else. I feel like their time has come to an end, especially with this year too and getting so many of them. And then on August 9th, we got the Mind Boggle skin as well. Our final Orc seasonal event, I will add. It's been so awesome seeing all of these new events come around this year. And the skin itself was really awesome with this one. I can remember at the time, I was really hoping that a crit would come. It didn't come, but it made itself up with all of the awesome references inside of this design. We had a monstrous book in here, laying out a fairy tale from the Dawn of Fire, which describes a certain ship going away when the cataclysm was happening, which was awesome to see that fairy tale come along. And just in general, it made it psychic with Kravlafiel. So cool, honestly. Again, I just don't understand how these skins turn out so different, so amazing, and befitting of the islands themselves. Then on August 9th, alongside Bookworm and everything else, we got Rare by Cinerous. Rare by Cinerous with its emperor on top. I love this one. Out of anything, the tail at the back. We actually really accurately predicted this rare inside of my fear is usually quite hard with his rares and epics to go out there and predict them. They're quite hard, but we got the tribal up really down, honestly. I don't know how we managed to do that that day, but we were doing something right. The world was going good that day. The tail is what makes up this monster, though. Then Rare Creepy Skull also came out that day as well on August 9th. This one, the fingernails, really, really creepy. Wobbling, this is what you want with these designs. I love how horror-sided the island is and seeing that with this. So awesome. So creepy as well, though. Based on a watermelon to get that summer song styled appearance as well. Maybe a month out here, but cool to see it coming around nevertheless. And then moving on now, on to anniversary month. And surprisingly, we're yet to get to my favorite month of the year. It might surprise you, but it's not this month, even though we have timelines full and I have to increase my timelines by two because there's that much content. Anyway, on September 1st, we got adult Ludwig. This one had such cool animations. This monster feels the most lively, honestly, out 
of most monsters I have seen. I think that credit goes to the one that's coming up next. There's epic Wobox on Gold Island, baby. But Adult Ludwig out of just regular monsters, not your box it ones that are meant to be all powerful and all that. This one, it has unique animations basically throughout the whole thing because of how many tracks Adult Ludwig has. Because of Ludwig having six tracks, it actually means six unique animations. And therefore, so much brought about and personality towards this monster, which I felt like made this monster and brought something special here. I feel like the amount of liveliness that this monster brought would be so cool to see replicated elsewhere. I don't know how you do it though, because it just has so many tracks. I feel like the rest of the adults with maybe Hornicle and Glacier, for example, having quite a few tracks as well, are also gonna make this so lively again really going to be awesome to see these adults making this island again just feeling so much more alive and then on september 1st as well i couldn't go without mentioning it guys come on we got me going to pax to meet the monster handlers i met them i met them lo and behold but the most important thing obviously for our year in review here is that the gold island at people box was teased a day early there photos of this thing were going around on tiktok i remember a bed told me at the time who i was with who's a friend of mine who's been in the community for a super long time with me told me that they were going around on tiktok and i'm like no save the surprise everyone because this guy it was awesome it blew my socks off seeing this absolutely amazingly did and i didn't realize it were there for like five minutes of standing there because i was just in amazement at the master <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on September 2nd, the day after we got Gold Island Epic Wobot, Bozinga, and a Jamboree reveal, all in the 11th anniversary trailer. I was so bamboozled behind this. I got revealed inside of my vlog, which you can go and watch towards the specifics behind the event. I'd not seen Bozinga's design. I thought that was so cool getting to see that. And Jamboree on Gold Island. Oh, you know, we're going to have to go to the individual things because there's too much to dissect here. But I will mention that we also got the reverse reveal towards what the map could look like in the future too here which is going to be quite revolutionary because right now it's just so tedious man it's going to get so awesome when we finally have that in game and then on september 6th this is the one epic wobox on gold island and i can remember inside of my vlog i revealed for the first time that this thing it would have different phases and its design would have different phases too you could see a basic glance at it inside of the trailer but we didn't really know what it mean them flags and if it had just have one form at the time but it turns out no it has five forms, each for one of the natural islands. Air Island and Epic Wobox finally got its justice inside of the community too. Lots of people have always kind of gone off for the, that one and said, it's the odd one out. It is the sound that doesn't really match the rest because it goes in the most put part of the song. It only has one track. The rest of them have more. I get you guys, but Air Island, Epic Wobox, it's gold form. It saved us all. And each one's so awesome. I felt like the cold design was so cool. And I'm also proud of us for predicting at the time too, the, the earth phase would go at the end of the song because that is a perfect phase that you put at the end it just it went about so perfectly and the transformations by this it feels like this was a thing of wonder it feels like something that wasn't supposed to be in the game but it is the fact that they put the transformation so seamlessly inside of the song and it doesn't clutter it, it doesn't do anything to it it makes it sound so amazing i cannot get over how they did that it's having a monster that transforms itself as well a wobox i mind you it's so revolutionary i'm just flabbergasted I i'm still in awe by it and whenever you watch gold island now it's the thing you look at because a monster transforming is such a unique concept it is a thing of dreams and you can see they put a lot of effort into this guy and the amount of tracks this thing has as well the most we've got for any monster on an island there's three tracks per phase that's not even counting the transformation ones so five tracks in total including the transformation ones and if you count in the idol that's actually 27 in total 27 unique sounds for a monster Crazy. And on September 6th, carrying on our Gold Island trend, we got Jamboree on Gold Island. This is just mind-blowing stuff. I lost my mind inside of the trailer because I just couldn't believe that was the one thing Tyson did not tell me. That Jamboree was on Gold Island. It was the final step, obviously, that they could have took for the seasonals. The final resting place, let's see, where the seasonals could have gone. This is the final one because we'd seen all of the seasonals at this point go to their respective islands. But Jamboree, even in its bio, it was always said to only go to seasonal, Shani. The 
They just blew all that apart though. They put it on the island. And I love Jamboree sound on Gold Island. Really nice. I loved it so much. I don't know why my head actually likes the Jamboree sound more than Gold Epic will but I'm still really unsure about that. I know it's more epic and it sounds better, but my brain just works in weird ways, apparently. If you watch inside of my reaction, you will actually see that as well. <laughs> then on September 6th, we also got Epic Jamboree. Epic Jamboree hold up in Monstrous, which we got again in a sphere is we've been right a lot this year, haven't we? With the banner up there in Monstrous reading out the numbers. Numbers aren't really used in Monstrous all too often, so it's nice to have seen that make a comeback almost here, or maybe even just for the first time happen, because we don't see at all Monstrous numbers. It's never really happening, so nice to get that inside of the game. And on September 6th, oh, this is the one. This is the one. This is the update. This is the one. Bozinga on Firehaven and Mythical Island. And that rope. Ah, so heavenly. Indeed it is. I have not cried behind a monster before, but this one, it brought so much emotion. Raw emotion out inside of Mythical Island. To the point where I was sat there and I was. I started crying on Mythical Island when I heard it sound. I can't believe how emotional it made it and the impact this monster had. What an amazing way to end an island. You got gnolls, but I think personally, this is my second favorite end to an island I have seen. Enchantling takes the cake because of the way it just illuminated the island and I can't picture a more complete finale than that, but Bozinga, up there, man, love you. Again, something else to Firehaven. Awesome to see Firehaven feel lively almost now. It has that energy brought a lot of charisma to that part of the song and another part of the song that felt a little down but now feels so cool. I love how Bazinga plays in the final verse. Obviously that's the main part which made me go wow but I also love how it filled out that second half of the song and differentiated it from the beginning. It was what I was really hoping behind this monster and I'm really happy that it did happen. And I will mention for this monster too that we actually saw its sound and heard it for the first time back in May 31st because people heard it sound in the polls. I didn't actually do that because I wanted to save myself from spoilers, but interesting fact there. That doesn't really happen before a monster releases. Ever. Then on uh, September 6th, we got Nerve. Quite a weird one here. Forgive my little error with my edit I've made here with its eyelid. Let's forget my drawing attention to that now. But with Nerve, it's... Oh, I love the amount of energy it brought to Crunchy's verse. Again, another part we were saying needs that update before this island ends, and then Therefore, they should just made it again. The perfect conclusion to the island. Trench's verse really conflicts with the rest of the song, but this monster really portrayed that verse quite well and added something there that made it not bring the song to a halt and complete the verse. And complete, therefore, Mythical Island, which I love very dearly and went down as my favourite island now. We love you, Mythical Island. Then on September 13th, the week after, we got Rare Fiddle, but in a conflicting look towards its original seasonal. Now, this went down as well with Rare Vivine, who will come up in a second here in October. But this one, rather than you lucky, go lucky, happy guy, quite shy, introverted, going into their little shrubbery that they have here. Which is quite nice when they do differentiate in designs like this, because obviously it brings the most out of these rares and epics, I would say. Then on September 13th, we also got Prismatic Pommel. Interesting symbols on this one, but not much more to say than that. And on September 20th, the one we all waited for, Mimic. Oh my god! God! Finally getting this. And I can't tell you. I don't know how this ends up so catchy as what it does, but it goes hard. Inside of the continent, inside of that final verse, I am literally addicted to listening to that now since this edition. It fits it so well. I love it. And they've finally got Dave Kerr as well, who composed basically all of the original game. Most of the islands. I love this guy. We've obviously been waiting for Mimic for a huge amount of time. It's yet to make an appearance in the main game, although maybe that could happen sometime soon, but I feel like it was awesome as well for Dawn of Fate to get something first for once. That's not happened in years now, and it getting that spotlight is something rightfully deserved and something that continued happening and actually, this marks the beginning of Dawn of Fire's re renaissance, when Dawn of Fire finally is now getting updates like never before. Mimic, we love you for that, but just in general it's awesome, the amount of light they brought into this design, the 
life it had between the concept art and how they managed to bring it back. I love the look that they chose to have this monster have. And obviously going on Cave Island is many people's favorite Dawnify Island. So that's awesome too. So funny as well how it mimics other monsters. I can't wait to see what that might mean for the future of this mimic. Because when it comes to the main game, it's going to be interesting to see whatever monster it mimics there. What a momentous thing though, man. Definitely a month to go down in the history books here. Then on September 20th, the sides mimic. I didn't even know Mimic was a thing till I saw that trailer. I was checking out Rare Astropod thinking that's cool. No, no, I didn't know anything. I needed to check out YouTube to see that trailer. I can remember seeing that trailer and being like, what, Don't if I never get updated? <laughs> oh my God, I was freaking out when I saw that trailer. But Rare Astropod, poisonous design for Shadow Glare, Ludwig's month, which is supposed to represent poison. I feel like you definitely get that look with Rare Astropod here. And again, a very nice one to fit with the Rare Bubblings. Now moving on, not to the next month but to september again because it's that much that i have to stop splitting the timelines apart for the next few months now september 27th we got prismatic wink this one the alien dude is what got me that is the one that surprised me a lot i can remember seeing that one and being shocked immensely all of these ones had the glass domes and different eyes and goo inside of them but the alien was the most animated and well-fashioned design i would say and quite an excellent surprise then on September 27th, we got something quite exciting happening. This was a time of unease. We didn't know what was going to come next for the game. I was saying the next era for the game is going to begin. And I still take that to be true, man, because we are seeing completely different things from this point on for the game. And this marked out really the beginning of that, which is the creators teasing Ethereal Workshop monsters. Monster Handlers got quite clever here. They decided for people like FGTV and Lorden, to go ahead and reveal these new monsters. People who you don't really get inside of the community doing these things, so my see monsters can obviously get new fans, which is awesome. And here we didn't have a clue really what was going on. Even up to that trailer, we still did not know. And I feel like that is part of what makes Workshop so special because we've known what's what for quite a while now. Even Amber Island, going back to that, we knew what was what. Mythical Island, the mythical sigil, it was obvious, I'm not gonna lie. But this one, this is something we could not guess. This is absolutely amazing and the island that it turns out we as well. It just can't be understated. So much confusion at the time though. And on September 29th, I could not go about not including this. It was my channel's 10th anniversary. We went about having tons of collabs on the channel. We had Matt Shea on. We had the Monster Club where I made Druttle, my very own monster. We had my sister come on for a video as well and another video which I am unfortunately yet to edit. <laughs> I need to edit it still but it's a certain person that you guys will love when they do come on for that video. I'm planning to have it out next month. It will be out next month. But it was so huge. Thank you guys so much for 10 years again. Absolutely phenomenal. I can't believe it. And moving on now onto my favorite month of the year, which of course has the thing which we all know how to be included in MPG's favorite month of the year. We will get onto it in a moment. Let's continue though. October 1st, adult tart. I don't like tart. Let's move on from that one. Nice to see an hippie look for this guy though, but definitely my least favorite celestial still. Because I want to move on now because we got the, on October 7th, we got the ethereal workshop reveal. No one knew what was happening. Everyone was so confused. Confused. Even when watching the trailer, I'm confused. I just didn't know what to make out. I didn't know what was going to happen. This was a moment of unease. We obviously knew that a new island was going to come. Everyone was predicting it. I was putting my theories out there. But when this came about, it's just so amazing. The fact that it was inside of Saraway, the ethereal island. I just, I can't get over the way it was done. And then it having unique mechanics as well. The Meebs. Critters, which I've been on about wanting for a year. We finally got new ones. And the, the center mechanic behind the island. Absolutely marvelous. We got obviously costumes revealed inside of this, but workshop, man. Workshop going inside of the island, wondering what is going on. And then not even really even from the trailer, figuring out that triple and quad element ethereals were coming until I literally dissected it and got, oh, this is what is going on. After watching the trailer again, it is wonderful. The amount of mystery behind it, something that I will never forget. And honestly, I'd go ahead and say my favorite trailer ever 
ever, just in terms of being excited, surprised, not knowing what's going on. Really rivals Magical Sanctum's trailer, this to me. I think it surpasses it. Just the idea of the island being inside of Ethereal Island as well. It's just so unique. So much lore, so much hope, and so much opportunity. We're moving on. On October 11th, I will mind you, four days after we got the Ethereal Workshop arriving, aka the best update of the year, as it has been proclaimed here. Obviously, there is no other best update in the year to me. This is my favorite thing. This is the thing that made me so happy. So, so happy. I just, I can't believe how amazing these first five monsters were. You got all Gloria. You got Blurret. You've got Meepkin. You got all these great monsters. The surprise behind Yurik. Yurik's little creature coming up. Honestly, that will stick with me to this very day. Ogler feeling like a god monster, which apparently is based off being like a goddess. I think it's awesome. The mime-like hands, the feathers on it, so cool. Gadzook's coming in with a really strange design, honestly. Them eye-looking things at the top actually being mouths. Quite a surprising feature behind it. Meeb Kane having really lively animations and feeling so cool and like an acrobat. It's so awesome how all of these different personalities come in and then Blarrett. I thought this was going to be squiggles right inside of my theories as the words calling it. It turned out to be so cool inside of that silhouette. I thought it was going to look hideous. We all did. But then it comes out and turns out to be cute and I do have to say it is one of my faves. It is in fact one of my faves. I'm not sure if it's up there with Wallaby and Pekina. Maybe it is. I love Blarrett. Blarrett, we love you. Blarrett, you are wonderful. I love this song so much as well. They nailed that ethereal factory vibe and setting this island apart from the other ones. I feel like with Mythical, they started to begin with experimenting with these different musical styles and I was really worried, honestly, after Amber Island. I was like, are we going to go back to that mundane song with so many blank spots and just not feeling right? But no, every single thing was shattered with this because I love this island so much. The song, I have not experienced a song like it. Ethereal Workshop. It's a song which I can't stop listening to in a way which I have never listened to with any other song. It's so catchy. I want to listen to it all the time and it will forever go down as being the best update to me. And it's going to be hard to beat this one, I do think, in terms of the future because it set the bar high, man. Then on October 11th, we also got... Moving on now, I actually spent a long time on that dinner. I couldn't help myself. Double element ethereals on the Colosseum, of course, but as main thing here, aka I've just put costumes, okay? Once again, we got lots of costumes here. So many, in fact, that I couldn't fit them all on the image. And also, I've not edited them together yet, the poses. I will get to doing that. But tons of awesome costumes here. Namely, the Voodoo one, quite differentiative to Voodoo's original design and the Ethereal Island landscape. The Socks Grandma one was just funny. Alongside the Rabbit Patty Fung Prey one, which just felt like a SpongeBob reference, honestly. And I just can't believe this came out on the same day. Again, crazy stuff, man. Then October 11th. We also got Celestial Wild Card. So now when you're powering up and aiming to revive your Celestials a little bit before, you can go ahead and choose this Wild Card option where you can put it down to chance and hope that you do end up getting a Celestial revived when you've not actually completed all of the eggs yet. I have found when people have done this that it's been quite nice. It's been quite a graceful feature. It's not gone ahead and denied anyone really from what I've seen. Actually, they've all been so Successful. I think definitely down to chance 50-50, especially depending on how many eggs you have. But awesome feature to see. I think it's another mechanic that just really suits the game and adds that element of chance, especially when you're getting eggs that might be quite hard to get, like rares. It really does help with aiming to get them when essentially you couldn't otherwise. And on October 11th as well, we got anniversary year ending. Finally, a year which was just absolutely amazing. I cannot believe how long we've been talking at this point, but I think that just comes to show how much content was packed into this year. There's never been a year as packed as this one. This, I am struggling to even fit the amount of content we had onto these timelines because it's bursting. There's so much here and it doesn't end there, guys. Because, I mean, Workshop, that is really something outside of Anniversary, I would say. So we're getting updates to it now after, but I feel like I'm liking the year after even more after Anniversary. Basically, there's Anniversary right now 
how I'm liking that more with Workshop and there's next update that we're getting. It's crazy to think how much the game evolved inside of this year too. I feel like anniversary year happening now when My Single Monsters was peaking so much because it really truly did get popular back in January. That is when everyone started coming and Nars and yeah, really boosted that output really. But to see a year happen when the game just was growing so much, I think surged the game to new highs, which is very exciting. And hi to everyone who is new to my year in reviews. I do these every year. <laughs> and then on October 18th, moving on from our wrong Rare Giga one, we got on October 18th, Rare Giga. Rare Giga came out on my birthday. I was so lucky this day because we got a lot revealed as we're about to get into. I feel like this Rare Wobble sign though, it didn't stand apart like the other ones. It felt like it didn't have that extravagance that the rest have. Obviously, they're really hard to power up these guys and I do get what they were going for with the Mad Scientist theme, with it being supposed to tie to Halloween and your spooky vibes, but it just didn't really feel all that cool. To me, this Rare Wobbling one, all of the rest of them have gone out of the park. I love them all. But this one, I've got to say, it felt weird. It didn't feel as cool. Hopefully, we don't get another one like that. Moving on, because another epic save the day. October 18th was one of my birthday. Epic Frumble. Epic Frumble save the day. Absolutely. Love this one because it feels so different and unique. It's based as well on the Monstriana Trenches, which is Anglo's Law we were on about earlier. Really cool to see that make a comeback again with another epic. Hopefully, we do keep advancing on that law because it's really awesome that we have more lore, obviously, in the game and we want to keep seeing these things be mentioned. And it's nice to see them do so as well. Moving on to October 18th again because on my birthday, the main thing that I was so excited about was the baby seasonals getting announced for Dawn of Fire. This is really revolutionary again because we've seen back in time that the seasonals were potentially planned for Dawn of Fire with t-shirts and Dawn of Fire like designs coming in but finally them appearing is something else. This marks that the Dawn of Fire is coming back. The Dawn is here because it is having a renaissance. Dawn of Fire feels more alive than ever now. It is bust Bustling, it is amazing. And hopefully that does continue. Seeing Baby Seasonals announced too was something we did predict the week before based on the recording from the Anniversary Month Mimic trailer. Really weird how we managed to get that right, man. But I think it's awesome that they've got Dave back for this again because Dave again, he's composed all of these islands. He composed all of Dawn of Fire. So it feels right to have him come back to the game for this. Then on October 25th, the week after, keeping up us waiting all this time, mind you. We've got Punkleton on the continent. Really, really awesome sound for Punkleton. This is my favorite sound Punkleton has had yet. On the continent, they sound absolutely amazing. I was so shocked by how good it sounded at the beginning of the song. They actually teased it in the trailer itself. We got costumes as well. I've not actually put that on my timeline, but we've got some awesome costumes inside of Spootical as well in Dawn of Fire. We got the Yelmut costume which is my favorite costume is just so cute i don't know why that is my favorite when we've got the so many but it just is i love all of the costumes that we got lots of creative ones like in incisor's one and Sousa. so much creativity and donna fire is just bustling we even got a addition towards the continent as well with the skin there didn't we making it have a more creepy look with the lands a really unique take as well having individual lands only one of them celebrate the seasonal event it's so cool to see that happen. Then on October 25th, we also got Prismatic Incisor. Speaking about Incisor, we have Prismatic Incisor. There you go. And moving on to a second part of October, because October was that jam-packed, my favourite month. We had to include more. We had more than what my timeline could fit. We had Rare Vane on the 25th. Rare Vane, really cool and conflicting design towards its original, I'd say. Cool to see different critters on this. I was thinking they could end up saving them for the epic can just go back to recolorizations of the critters, but they went out of the way. They got the water island one here. You got the air island one here. The critters made this design for me. I am forever intrigued, though, what is behind the wooden bark of Revivane. I would love to know that sometime. Then on October 25th, we got Epic Voodoo. Now, for his 12th year of MSM, I'm predicting that his Epic Ethereals are obviously going to be a big part of that. And first up, we have Epic Voodoo to commence that. The winged look and talent and seed elbow likeness was an interesting take for this one. Apparently, it's based on a horror film, this one. I'm not sure what the reference is behind it, but I thought it was quite a cute design. I think it's quite cute. I like it a lot. Why 
Pocky. <laughs> I went Pocky Pig from Looney Tunes. <laughs> okay, moving on to November now. We had on November 1st, Adult Plixie. Adult Plixie. What a weird one. This one made me laugh. Why is it muscular? I don't think of this when I look at Plixie. You know, it goes to elder form and it just gets weak and I just feel sorry for it now. Look at it though. It's muscular, this one. is very different in comparison to Plixie. I feel like this middle teen stage, they've been going into the teenness a lot with these. Whether it be the part one or this one, they really have, haven't they? And then on November 1st, we also got Epic Clava Vera on the same day. The beginning of our epic seasonals. I like this design a lot. It's a little bit more darker. It's almost that in-between between rare and normal Clava Vera. I also quite liked their unique animations. I felt like the original ones might have been more impactful because those were quite recent as well somehow. But awesome to see unique animations again because whenever they do that, it is so amazing. Epic Goblin Gods definitely set up a lot of competition for these epic seasonals though now, I think, because that had so much personality and I would love to see that for every epic seasonal. On November 1st, we also got Rare Ruba. Rare Ruba going in that meditational, easygoing vibe as well inside of my second favourite month of the year. Water paint coated all over this monster and a colourful look fitting with that meditational vibe and easygoingness of the original Ruba. And on November 1st, besides that, we got four Beats Hereafter costumes. These costumes, really cool. I thought the pom-pom one returning, which was seen in Halloween, was really clever because that is a skeleton, obviously, and it used to be in previous Spooksicle events. Before they added purchasable costumes, the monsters used to change like they do in Dawn of Fire, and that was one of the pom-pom ones. Reusing that for Beat Hereafter is a lot more perfect than Spooksicle, and I find it so funny that they did that, man. I didn't even catch on that inside my Discovery video because I thought the costume was missing, but no. It turned out really cool. And we actually got a Thumpage reference with the butterfly on top of Plinkajou 2. Our very first magical costumes these were too for Uduk and Plinkajou. I'm hoping that we get some awesome ones. I was hoping for a Pekinder one so, so bad. So hopefully that can happen sometime. Or maybe a Tapcom one next year because I would love that so much. Then on November 15th, we got the Fire Expansion trailer. Fire Expansion. What? This is the one. This is the biggest update I have ever seen to the game. And you want to know how big it is? MPG didn't predict this one. No one could have predicted this one. Because this one, it was humongous. Everything compiled into this. We, we've got probably a whole timeline itself in my gear in review. Just dedicated to this single update. This is the biggest update that has ever happened for My Singing Monsters. And probably ever will happen. Had in so many monsters to all of the Magical Islands and Fire Haven and then everything else in between. I mean, it, it was just uncanny and seeing it happen in the trailer was so weird and peculiar. Rare Spirit taking down Kane as well. Kane are getting angry will be a meme forever. I just, I can't get over this update. Let's delve into it though. So on November 15th, inside of the Fire expansion, we got Candelavra on Fire Haven. They didn't have to do this. They didn't have to. But Candelavra, it was the missing Quint. You got your Quint's all of them besides Mimic on the Magical Islands. You gotta have Candle Ever on Fire Haven, right? It's a perfect match. Wax Candle of Quint, you put it on Fire Haven. Perfect. And in saying that all of these Quints are perfect wherever they went, it feels like they've almost been planning it for years, which they had. So Candle Ever's sound on Fire Haven, it's harmonious, it's wonderful, it contributes so much to that final verse. It really complements Rare Woobox too. And that coming out earlier in the year, you can see where it was going now when it complements that sound in the finale because it, man, that sounds so good when those two duet in the end now. Just amazing seeing the Quints come from Amber Island elsewhere inside of the game because I wouldn't have thought that would happen until they went to Dawn of Fire. But seeing them elsewhere, it made the Quints for me. It made them so special and I was in awe at the time just the fact that they were outside of Amber Island because it is my least favourite island in the game, guys. Excluding the Colosseum, it's just amazing to see. Then on November 15th, complimenting a Candelabra, we got Rare Candelabra. Candelabra too. Rare Candelabra, a hollowed out appearance. Really cool design. I like the one eye instead on this one and the different flickers of hair. Really nice. Delving into the green tones of this too and complimentive of Fire Haven. Which, mind you, I will add, is finally nice to see these rare quints go where they were clearly designed for. Because on November 15th, we also got Yelmo Tiawa Dromedary on Light Island. All of this on one day. 
one day. You want to blow MPG's brain up? You bring all of this out on one day. The biggest update in my singing monsters history. Yelmot on Light Island. Let's talk about that for a second. This monster, it, it clearly does not work on that. It's not supposed to work on an island that's supposed to be serene, melodious, a, a yelling monster. I thought we were going to end up with an Enterbrat situation, but no. It works perfectly. Just like every single monster of fire expansion does, there's not a single fire expansion monster that has something that isn't just wonderful, that isn't just excellent, that doesn't make the songs better amazingly. I can't believe these guys are limited time, honestly, because they, they are car monsters. They are above and beyond base monsters on the island. I would even go as far to say they're better than the car monsters they really outshine themselves on this island and provide things that are unimaginable unless you see this update for the first time dromedary 2 adding finally some percussion and tiawa differentiating out the final bit of the song too whilst tiawa are complimenting that first section of light island finally making light island feel different and not repetitive it's something we were all here for and by far the most changed island song out of all of the magical islands inside of fire expansion Light Island went out of its way to make itself awesome inside of this update, and I'm so glad it did. Then on November 15th, we also got... Do I even have to say 15th? It's all on the 15th. Bicinerous, Edamimi, and Bowhead all on Psychic Island. Bowhead is the one that captivated us on Psychic Island. Bicinerous is so catchy, though, too. I love that addition, vocalist part, to Psychic. Even Edamimi's slightly different in two tracks that it has. Everything combined so well inside of this, and Bowhead. Bowhead. I can't believe that beginning to the song. Even now, it differs it out so much. It makes it sound so harmonious and melodic and amazing. Bowhead was the true one out of all of the individual monsters that really spiced the island up and made this island something different and just contribute the most to the song. Bowhead might even be the monster that I think has changed a song the most in the game at all. I would rate as being such. Bowhead, you have changed Psychic Island forever. The fact you play through the whole thing is amazing. The monster has truly never changed the song as much as Bowhead. And then we also had on the same day, Krillby, Pongping and Tusky on Fairy Island. Krillby and Pongping, them coming in to Hippity Ops verse. I love that so much. And the little flutters they add to to Fiddles verse and Tusky coming in to that intersection and finally filling that out some more. Really awesome. I, I, I just I'm, I'm, I'm awestruck here by every single one of them. Pongping too. I don't know how such a minor sound that really you wouldn't expect to contribute so much does inside of the song. It's amazing this year how experimentative they got with the instruments, yet how much reward came with that experimentation. That truly is the most insane thing. Krillbait, you are the one that I think finally got your justice here inside of the game. I feel like you were the one on Fairy that I liked the most. So it's quite an abrupt sound, but still very wonderful. Then on November 15th, we also got Finally, well, not finally, we've got even more coming. <laughs> so, Incisor, Flamox, and Nulls on Bone Island. Nulls and Bone Island. That is the combination. That's made in dreams. It is something that's not supposed to be real. But it is. Nulls on Bone Island shook the community, I feel, apart. It made everyone quake. Every single part of this update made everyone quake. But this is something of dreams. Plumox had such a nice, distinct vocal part to that little verse after Nulls that really complements the song and again differentiates it out. So nice, the additions that these guys had. Instastar as well, finally playing more than once, let's say, in a verse. And having the justice it deserves again. And justice, that's what all of this update is about, honestly. Justice for us. Quince, just for these monsters outside of Amber Island. Finally. And Amber Island getting a reward, finally, for all those relics you've been collecting all that time, too. Nulls on Burn Island. Can't believe how amazing that sounded as well. So cool, man. Let's go on to the rest of November now, though. As on November 15th, another part of the fire expansion update was all of the fire quad rares arriving on the magical islands. Obviously, we had rare kind of lever too, but we just mentioned them. Fire quads as ones. We've been wondering what is going on with these designs all year round. But finally, we got Azansa here. They're supposed to be going to these magical islands. They were never even designed for Amber Island, let's be honest, guys. They were always designed for these islands, so that's why they looked so weird on there. And they fit perfectly there. And I'm so glad they went this route, because they looked so cool on there. Oh, I loved every 
single one, checking them out. And the fact it came out on the same day as this amazing huge update went before they've gone ahead and wrinkled it out later and whatnot. Shows they are confident. They have content planned, guys. And they are ready to deliver, even for the rest of the month. And then on November 15th as well, oh my god, are we even over yet? No, this is the biggest update in history, guys. Buckle down. Retsbury arrived, which is based on the free egos. I thought it was going to end up being a menace of a monster, but it turned out actually looking quite law-heavy based and honestly quite cool, that design too. Uh, we also got as well with this a skin update to Fire Haven. I, I was running out of things. I was thinking, you know, guys, I was putting together this timeline. There were that many images. I just thought, let's combine this with Spirit. Fire Haven, it changed so much. This felt like a very core base island seasonal design, which needed updating so much. Out of all the seasonal skins, this is the one that needed updating. And I'm so glad they went back and updated it. And our final skin update for the year as well, and probably ever as well. I don't see them really going back to these island designs now. I'm glad that they went back to this one though, because it certainly did need it. And then on November 15th, we also got Rare Bone Petite. Just wow, all at once, just everything. This is absolutely wonderful. I love this Rare Wubbling a lot. I would rate it as being my second favorite, and I feel like lots of justice was given to Bone Petite. I feel like it's a favorite in the community. Lots of people love Bone Petite, and seeing it get such an awesome design was so cool. I was kind of hoping that they'd go back to Jammer Splash as Petite inside of Bone Petite, the original one, is based on the blue jammer from there, but maybe we can see that one day. Who knows? And then moving on now onto Prismatic Snizer. The final thing for the month, which, oh my goodness, can we mention how much came in this month? Most of it on one day. Anyway, Prismatic Snizer arrives, and this one, the biggest one that stands out here is obviously the orange one, the huge eye. They went ahead and added with some of the eyes to the back of them rather than at the front, and they completely took away the two geysers and just made it one, which made this one really unique, and it was interesting to the different limbs that they put across this one. Quite an interesting prismatic design, but creepy as you expect. And then on December 1st, moving on to December now, we have Adult Atmos. Adult Atmos, oh, I love this one. I love it so much. Adult Atmos, this is my favorite adult design as of yet. I love it. It feels like a Steven Universe fusion as the comments read out to me, and I couldn't agree more. Love you, Adult Atmos. You're huge, tough dear. Big furball you are. We love you to bits. Then on December 6th, we got the Festival of Ye 2023 trailer. This revealed to us a teaser for Ethereal Workshop Wave 2 and also tons of stuff for Dawn of Fire. It revealed new variants. It revealed so much. So let's talk about what it did reveal because I cannot describe you what the wait was like for Wave 2 because we'd been waiting months and then we were hyping this trailer up that we'd get it this day and then it turned out to be another week later. I can see why they did it because they wanted a spotlight on Dawn of Fire but it really pained me, man. <laughs> it pained me waiting that long, but my patience, it paid off. All of his patience, it paid off. So let's go on. Now, the biggest thing from this trailer, and honestly, my favorite thing, even over Wave 2, honestly, was Tusky in Dawn of Fire. A precious, wonderful Quinn. I love this design so much. Tusky, I cannot believe how much it changed with its adult design. Feels like the adult design even outpaced the baby design because it just, it turned so amazing. I don't know how it looked so cool in that Dawn of Fire style. Tusky, obviously my favorite Quinn. It was so awesome, the additions that they made to Cloud Island, which maybe is complete now, thinking about it, but the Continent 2, adding to that Quarist a bit, just making this song so awesome and impactful. I cannot believe how impactful Tusky was. Just Justice first Quince, and I'm all here for it after I'm, I just love them so much. I feel like they are so precious. I want to talk about them all day, but we're moving on. December 6th, Yule on the Continent now. Yule arrived on the continent as well on the same day. I was expecting it a week after, honestly, like Punkleton, but no, it came out on the same day as the trailer, it turns out. We got Dave Coat, the back again, voicing it. The jingles on this one, they're quite quiet inside of the song, I find it quite hard to hear them, but the song, the, the voice, it could not be better. And going in the perfect part for it as well with the Caniverse, just an all around perfect seasonal addition to go along with Punkleton and really excites me for the seasonals. I am so glad that they've gone away from them seasonal shanty sounds and they're going back to the car based seasonal sounds because that's what everyone loves and we are all here for nostalgia and as much as it might tempt one to change one sometimes things are best left untouched and they are perfect anyway and then on december 13th we finally finally 
Finally, got our ethereal workshop wave two and beginning that with flask, which it seems to be the community favorite among the wave two alongside whale, maybe. People seem to head over heels for this one a lot more though, it seemed like. Anyway, this one adds quite a large percussion like sound to this, fills out the song quite a bit, adds two tracks. I love the experimentational vibe of this monster. It's so awesome seeing the potion flax become a tail and the mixtures itself. I feel like this one was so creative and its animations just really went out of the way with this one by far the most experimentative in terms of animation of the year i would rate it just seeing the potions mixed together and how its tail goes amongst itself just so ambitious this monster honestly even in terms of instrument seeing potion bottles smack against each other for its sound it's so unique and amazing then on december 13th we also got nightmare nightmare there's poor little soul over here which everyone has brought out to me but i just think it's a horror based design but apparently it's sad i see it now i I see the sadness in its eyes. I am looking into its soul. This one is based on Five Nights at Freddy's. It feels like it's a huge reference, honestly. I'm not sure, all too sure about its contribution towards the song. I feel like we could have had more. We could have had more, but also we are in our first ethereal workshop wave. And seeing as though this had three and the other ones aren't going to have as many monsters in them, the rest of the waves, I feel like they might be saving the best ones for those waves because they need more to stand on. So kind of hoping for that because I feel like wave two didn't quite stand as much as wave one. I am hopeful that they, they are saving the key monsters to the song for the rest of the waves. I feel like that is what is going to happen. But all in all, as true saviour for me at least, is Whale on December 13th as well. Whale is the one that I just was so amazed by. This is the one that saved the wave for me and made it just so amazing. It is Oh, it's so cool. Maggie Park, who Dave Kerr is married to, came back and voiced this. And obviously they voiced tons of monsters like Magpie and it just paid off so well. That vocalist sound inside of the new verse and bringing back Gadzook's track, which wasn't in the song before and adding that. Oh, that verse is killing it. It is my favorite part inside of the workshop song now. And that's saying a lot because it used to be Argler's part. Now, it kind of dampened down on that a bit though, but well, that is everything. I love the vocalist that they have. And I'm so excited now to see potentially more vocalists too, like Whale and these, because before Whale, we didn't have actual vocalists besides mechanical ones coming in. So it was really nice to finally get that humanoid one. And that human component definitely contributes to the song a lot always. On December 13th, we also got the synthesizer upgrade, which actually it takes away one of your monsters. I did not even realize this until after recording. It took away one of my Eureks and it actually requires one of your monsters to be able to get a quad. It's just so interesting insane. I can't believe that it actually does that, man. It's so cool, though, how Ethereal Workshop, it has different mechanics and I will add, their mechanics are actually cool. I feel like the game has struggled for a long time to set itself apart in terms of mechanics and coming up with new ones. Last one, really, was Wobbling Island that had a big payoff that really worked, or in fact even a mechanic in general. Yeah, the last new mechanic that we had really was Wobbling Island, which was ages ago. So finally having a new mechanic that is just awesome because in the past, mechanics have sometimes received criticism. I feel like it is something that needs to be said and I do hope that this inspires them to do more experimentation. Just like in his ethereal theories when we were saying, oh, how are you going to breed these? Because it's going to be something new. They really paid off that well and did something very unique and something awesome. Then on December 13th, we also got Rare Monculus. I wasn't all too sure about the design, but when I saw its mouth moving inside of its animation, I could see where they were going with this. It looks so crazy when it moves without a face. I, I just think it's so ominous and creepy. Really befitting of Ethereal Island, this monster though, but Wobbling, I'd say. Really awesome though. Then on December 13th, we also got Epic Bellow Fish, which is based on a blob fish. This poor soul, it looks like Mr. Krabs without a shell. I'm still saying that, but the crystal inside of it is broken and it's based on a crab. I would rate this as being maybe the best bearing that we got out of these. And once again, really befitting, seeing as though the epic double element of ethereals are just so hard to breed. I still need to get epic bellow fish and voodoo, guys. Hopefully I can sometime. Then on December 13th, our very final thing of the year, we got rare Scargo. Again, a wonderful addition to Wobbling Island. It was quite unusual to me that in the past two months, they did tease the rare Wobblings. It feels like they are really hard to get. So it's nice when we have the opportunity to get them in game, I feel like, but 
really awesome design on the shell and the eye. The eye is what makes this monster alive. And you thought that was the end? Well, so did I too. But we have another timeline of stuff which has happened after and also stuff where I have forgot, which obviously can't happen in our year in view. So editing MPG is here. And on December 13th, we have the Amber Island Crucible fix. I completely stepped over this thing. Basically, since the epics arrived along with the Dane back in April, we've been waiting for a Crucible fix. The epics in game have been really hard for a long time to be able to obtain on Amber Island to the point where they were literally impossible and people were spending thousands of relics trying to get them. However, they went ahead when Ethereal Workshop Wave 2 came and they fixed the Crucible. It's now a lot easier to get the epics. They've made the res a little bit harder. They were honestly quite easy to get, so I get that. And it's nice to see them listening to the community. They initially was thinking that this is just how it is, and it seems like they've discussed internally about how the community just doesn't agree with that, and they've remedied this situation, which is just amazing to see that they've gone back on the word and listened to the fans, as that is absolutely astounding, and it means we can actually obtain these things on Amber Island now. Then on December 27th, we also got Rare Wiz Bang. This thing is the thing that made me come back to do this because it just randomly came in. I've been spending the past over nine days now editing this consistently. And then Rare Wiz Bang comes along and I knew I had to update it. It's got a massive cape. This Its animations don't really change all too much in comparison to its original design if we're looking at it from that perspective. But in terms of its idol, you can see it has those flags. It also has unique sparkles, which is quite cool. I'm really fascinated towards how they've aimed in this direction with this one. I've seen lots of comments regarding how this is very similar towards the normal variant. And honestly, it doesn't really just perhaps suit itself as much towards having this rare variant, which I found was quite an interesting opinion there, but a cool design nevertheless. I love the goggles on this one. Then we come on to our final thing for real this time after Rare Scargo. We have in September, the weekly polls for the plant called Air, Water and Earth Island Natural Colossals. I've been mentioning this throughout the year in review, but obviously I wanted to put it here now so we can actually talk about these results that we got. So this is the first poll that we got is for the Planet Island Colossal. We had the following names, Greenwich, Verger, and Myvin. And the community chose Greenwich, which I completely agreed with as well. I thought that was the best name to choose, honestly. Then we had the Cold Island one, which was Frigil, Brumalis, or Octos. I chose Octos. I really like that one, but Frigil is also really cool. Then we had the Air Island one, which was Zephyr, Kazan, or Taurizi. And the community chose Zephyr for this one. And the Water Island one, we had Hydrid, Swag, and Notka. And the community chose Hydrid. Absolutely the best choice for that one, I'd say. And then for Earth, it was Patero, Solemn, or Dirtrick. Everyone was thinking that it was rigged because everyone was choosing the first results. But then the final poll concluded it was not rigged because everyone instead chose the second choice for this one, which was Solemn. Out of all of the colossal names, I'm really in love, honestly, now with Zephyr, which actually wasn't even the one which I chose in the first place. But <laughs> I find it cool how things can kind of go back on you like that, man. I like Solomon a lot to that name. Honestly, such cool names behind the Colossals, and it's going to be interesting to see how these might be utilized in the future as well. We've seen lots of references already to Zaroe, which is our Ethereal Island Colossal, which was named along with when Ethereal Workshop released, but we've only got six Colossal names right now, and it's going to be interesting to see how they go about distributing the rest of them. I think these polls were awesome, getting the chance to name them, and for the future, just seeing perhaps if we do eventually get that Colossal Island. It would be awesome to see the Colossal Spirits named after these individual names that we chose as well. And that was my year in review for 2023. I am losing my voice at this point. I cannot believe I have been sat here this long. There has been so much content, guys. Now, if you enjoyed this at all, though, please make sure to leave a like because these are some of the most hardest ones to put together, honestly, as you go through the entire year, and I would really appreciate it. But for now, also make sure to go and check out my other year in reviews up here. I'll see you guys later, though, for now. What a year. Oh, my God.